everyone. Welcome to another episode of Advancing With. Today, we are speaking with the founder and president of Fifth Influence, George Potts. George, say what's up. So um, I'm George Potts. I am the president and founder of Fifth Influence. Fifth Influence is a digital advertising agency headquartered in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And what we do is we work with progressive brands, organizations, issue advocacy groups, even political campaigns. And we develop um, emotive, performance-driven campaigns for them. It pulls you in emotionally, but then we balance our creative conceptual thinking with metrics, with data, with analytics. So everything is performance driven. You know, you worked at some bigger agencies in your past and what was the decision making process and the turning point for you in saying, like, I'm going to go out and start my own thing and why? Yeah. Um, well, I had in 2017, I was part of the team that led all the digital and social media on the 84 lumber campaign. And you can pine your entire career to work on a Super Bowl campaign. So it was called The Journey. It was about um, a mother and daughter emigrating from Guatemala um, to the United States. It was right after Trump was elected. So um, a great deal of attention. It was actually lampooned by um, Saturday Night Live, um, got a, a ton of coverage. So you can work your entire career and, and, and never work on a Super Bowl campaign. So that was number one. Number two, uh, I'm very fiscally conservative. My daughter was gradu graduating from college. My son was gonna be going to college and I was in a financial position where, you know, I could leave Bruner with Michael's blessing and come and start my own agency and, and really focus more on the issue advocacy and, and brands that have purpose type of space that a lot of agencies um, in the past tread lightly or wish to avoid because um, of the politics involved. And the one thing we do at Fifth Influence is we wear our politics on our sleeve. We're a left of center agency and we only work with progressive, communitarian, democratic types of, of organizations and, and campaigns. Why did you want to lean into, you know, something that, you know, a lot of people might tend to avoid, especially in a world where you kind of want to hit a little bit both sides and get work from, you know, whatever the company, right. multiple different kinds of companies. I believe many organizations would benefit from the competencies that exist in an advertising agency. Um, and agencies just aren't willing necessarily to, to, you know, not all agencies, I think it's much different today, but, but in the agencies I had worked in, all of them were apolitical. And I didn't want to be apolitical. I wanted to be able to, to go out and say, this is our position. We feel strongly about this. And if you don't agree, that's great. And, and, and you know, I may respect you and, and we may have an ongoing friendship, but you may not necessarily be a client for our agency. And, and I think that's another part is modeling behavior that you can disagree passionately with someone or an organization and still respect them and be professional. You know, we believe we can hold the position that we hold and still be respected in the business place. You know, did you have any concerns, you know, when you, when you went out and like, we're going to make this stance, we're going to be left to side, we're going to start this business. Do you have any concerns that like your, you know, kind of sleep into the world of business ownership and entrepreneurship and that realm could backfire if you let, leaned into your morals that way? Honestly, no. I forget where I picked this up. I picked a lot of lessons up and, and things up over my career. Someone pulled me aside and said, listen, 50% of people are going to like you. 50% of people are not going to like you. And it doesn't matter what you do. They're just, they're just not going to like you. Don't worry about people that don't like you. Concentrate on the people that do. And, and if you know that, then it, much, it makes it much easier to take the leap and to embrace a positioning that you know is going to alienate at least 50% of potential clients. How do you deal with your clients maybe having some trepidation about that kind of mantra? Because, you know, we've all worked with clients that are like, well, I, you know, I don't want to pick off the people that don't like me. But like, well, you're supposed to at least help and go after the people that do like you, right? Right. Um, I mean, our, our, our true north is pursuing brands and organizations and groups that fall within that side of the political spectrum. At the same time, especially over COVID, um, we welcome clients from, from all different types of, of verticals and, and positions. And we're open about you know, the type of agency we are and where we, where we lean um, from, from a issue standpoint, from a political standpoint. And 
we haven't seen any challenges with that. You know, something that you mentioned earlier about, you know, your approach as an agency that stuck out is, you know, having that emotional response to the work that you do and balancing that with, you know, the data and the metrics. And, you know, it's not an easy task, uh, even in today's world. How have you dealt with those kind of two economies and bringing them together? We believe they're highly complementary. And not everyone believes that. In fact, there's an individual at a sizable agency in our market um, whose philosophy is creative doesn't matter. All that matters is targeting the right people and getting the message at the right time. We believe in the latter, but we also believe that the message should be conveyed in a vehicle that you know garners greater emotional response, that it just can't be a, a, a static type of message, which gets to why video is so popular now on social media and, and it's the dominant it's the dominant vehicle in the, in the newsfeed. And so we don't believe they're at odds. We believe they're complementary. And often what we'll do is we'll work with clients and we'll push to explore a spectrum of conceptual creative, but that's where we let creative co concepts and performance dictate. Like we live in a really unique time where we have clients that, 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 really feel strongly about something. And then we take that and we develop a concept from it and we put it in market and it, and it fails. And we've had clients say, well, I don't believe that. And we are in a unique time where people feel they can, they can argue things that are, what we believe are more black and white. Like, again, I, I like to say math, like math is math, like two plus two is four, but sitting back and just listening to the client you know, often like really working hard, even though you know something you believe passion is going to work, listen to the client and then, and then using their vernacular, using their language, using what's important to them to illustrate why this concept is going to work for them and is so important. I think, I think that's, that's critical. What do you kind of see for the, for our industry in the future? Things like cryptocurrency, understanding that entire environment from from a um, marketing and advertising standpoint, I, I think it's important because it, it is it is a currency it is currency in a mar marketplace. And then you have the whole the whole gaming the meta. Like I'm not a big fan of of Zuckerberg's push uh, on the metaverse, um, but a, a, a virtual reality, which is much which is more advanced than it is currently, and it, you know, is going to be in existence. It, 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 the complexity is is deep. And it's only going to deepen, which is opportunity, but also challenges. And that's where I see, see the industry. I just see it deepening in regards to how much expertise an agency needs to have or, or stables of agencies need to come together to, to help provide expertise to clients and guide clients. What is your advice or thoughts to share with you know, the next generation that will be taking the mantle of the industry here? What I tell them is read our periodicals, read, read Adweek read Ad Age, read The Drum, read TechCrunch. Um, read as much as you can read. I think that's a life lesson, but particularly in our industry, you got to have a freaking huge mosaic and you better have a thousand tiles of, of different sources you're reading from to um, stay abreast and advance your career now. Is there advice you have for your, your peers or thoughts you have for the peers in the industry? Um, regards to where things are going or just in general from your own experience that you want to share? Well, for a long time, and, and you know this as a member of AAF, um, there, there's the Mosaic newsletter that comes out, Ad Age covers diversity. We, we have a significant, I mean, and, and it's ironic, you know, I'm a 51-year-old white man, so who am I to, to, to pontificate about diversity or industry? But it's, it's a problem. You know, the bigger agencies, if they're truly going to speak to every facet, right? Like if you have certain target audiences, I don't know how you do that without individuals in, in the door who have that experience. I don't know the solution. You know, AF Pittsburgh, we have the pitch, right? The four A's has been working on this for over a decade. AF's working it for over a decade. You know, the, the numbers haven't improved. So I, I don't know how we attract minority populations in, into our industry. And I don't necessarily know what we're doing wrong either. Like, you know, I feel pretty, pretty good about the diversity we have at Fifth Influence, but there's only six of us, right? Like I'm not, I'm not at, a, at a 200 person agency within a holding company. Just because of where we're positioned, it's, it's, it, as an agency, it concerns us, so. 
No, it's definitely true. If, um, anything else you want to add before we wrap it up? Mm. Just that I'm very thankful to the community, um, the advertising community overall. As, as cutthroat and as much as we complain about RFPs and, and other agencies in the stable not playing well, I, I have to say that in, in my career, and knowing the complexity and how many agencies do work with clients at times, I think we are incredibly kind and supportive of, of each other. Um, and I don't think we talk about that enough. I, I think a lot of times we talk about this agency lost this account and, and, you know, look at these people with this agency and what they're doing. And, and, you know, I don't, I don't think we, we celebrate the strong community that we have overall. Michael Bruner in particular, Michael Bruner, who, who built Bruner over four decades, um, he's now retired. I wouldn't be sitting here without him. When I, when I told him that I was leaving, he looked at me and he said, are you going to a client? I said, no. And he said, are you going to another agency? And I said, no. He's like, I said, I'm, I'm going to start my own agency. And he said, good. Because if you're going to the client, I tell you, you, know, you don't have the personality to, to be successful on the client side. If you're going to another agency, I'm going to walk around and slap you because you're not, you're not going to do anything you haven't done another agency you haven't done here. And, and you're welcome to stay here. He's like, but I can't, I, I can't tell you not to pursue your own agency, not to pursue your own dream. He said, not only will I not tell you, I'll, I'll support you in that. I don't know how many other industries that when you tell the CEO you're leaving to start possibly, you know, most CEOs look at it as competition, right? I don't know of any other industry that would, that would be that supportive of someone leaving. And when you look at Bruner in particular, the number of people have left that agency to start agencies, um, Bill Garrison, Dave Hughes, Garrison Hughes, John Gatesman going over and joining Frank Marmion, which is now, which is now Gatesman. Um, and there's a few others, and myself, and there's a few others along the way. And that's very common. I mean, bigger agencies, it's extremely common that many people leave and start their own agencies. And you never hear any, any like stories about massive lawsuits or stuff like, like most people are supportive. And, and I think that's what I want to leave with is we have, a, we have an extremely supportive, caring community in, in, our, in our industry that allows us to do what we do and partner and create great work for clients because there's 12 agencies and we have to partner together. Um, and I, I don't think clients necessarily see that all the time. And I know people outside the industry are, are always find it fascinating. And I'm really glad that I've built a career and be able to start a business in this industry because of that. George, thank you so much for the wonderful conversation. I hope you all enjoyed it as much as I did. And we will see you next month with the newest episode of Advancing With. Until then, have a good one. Thank you